All right, so I'm going to show you guys how to very quickly rig any tank that you have in your inventory. I'm going to speed run through this stuff just to show you guys you can do this in only a couple of minutes, all right? So we have a tank over here that we downloaded from Sketchfab. It was totally free. As you can see, we have separate wheels, all right? And we have a hull, we have a turret. And the tracks over here are completed. So they, they have their modifiers applied. We can't turn them anymore. So we're probably going to have to redo those, okay? So first things first, we're going to rename the hull. And by the way, let me just enable my screencast keys over here. We're going to rename the hull, and we're going to name that just hull, just so we can recognize it when we add some constraints. And we're going to have to take everything over here, and we're going to have to parent it to the hull, okay? So we're going to parent everything and keep the transform. So now when we pull the hull, everything moves along with it, all right? Now we're going to select our first wheel. We're going to go over to the constraint properties, not the physics, but the constraints over here. Add the transformation constraint. We're going to set the target to hull. We're going to ch check extrapolate and we're going to set the owner to local space. All right. We're going to have to do this for every single constraint, by the way, which we add. So we're going to map from location and we're going to map to rotation. So this means that when, when the tank changes location on the X axis specifically, the wheel is going to change its rotation. All right. So the movement from the tank is converted into rotation around the wheel. So we're going to map from movement on the X axis between minus one and one meter. This is just a way to convert the values. Just put this every single time, minus one to one. Uh, and we're going to set the rotation for the Y axis because we need this to rotate around the Y axis. But this is going to get its information from this X axis input over here. All right, so we're gonna set this to X and we're gonna set the minimum to like one minus 180 degrees and the maximum to 180 degrees. So now every meter that the tank moves in the negative direction, that the wheel rotates 180 degrees in the negative direction and the other way around in the positive direction as well, which is looking pretty good, but you might have to tweak these values a little bit if your wheel is a little bit smaller or larger. So now we're gonna select all the other wheels on this side of the tank, except the one which we just rigged. We're gonna select all these other wheels and we're gonna select the one that we already rigged last. We're gonna go up here to object and we're gonna click on con uh, constraints and copy constraints to selected objects. So now all these other objects are gonna have the same rig or the same constraint copy to them. We might have to readjust the position of some of these items though. So now we have that over here. And next we're gonna to have to take care of these tracks here. So as you can see, they're all a solid shape, which means we're gonna to have to delete everything. We're just gonna keep one link and one bolt over here. Now in this case, we have something hidden. So I'm gonna press Alt H to unhide some of the items. And I'm also gonna press Control E and I'm gonna clear all the seams so I can select the loose parts a bit more easily. Now I'm gonna select this track and this bolt that connects it. Then I'm gonna press Control I to inverse my selection and I'm gonna delete everything else except this track here. Now I'm gonna select this track in edit mode and I'm gonna snap my 3D cursor to that. I'm gonna go up here to object, set origin, origin to th uh, 3D cursor right here. By the way, it's good to set a shortcut to that. So now we have our first track over here and we can go ahead and add an uh, array modifier to that just to make it into a full set of tracks. Now we're gonna have to change the value over here to something like 0.79, I believe. When we're gonna have to crank the value up a little bit. Now that we have the tracks over here, we're gonna go down here uh, underneath one of these wheels or we're gonna place our 3D cursor on one of the wheels here. And from side view, we're gonna go ahead and add a curve and we're gonna add a path curve right there. So this path curve should go underneath the wheels over here, just below on the ground. And we're gonna bring it over here to the side and we're just gonna start extruding it over here so that we can wrap it all the way around all of the wheels, okay? So just do what I do. It doesn't have to be super exact because it's kind of gonna get smoothened out anyway as if you have a subdivision surface modifier on it or something. And just try to get it as close as you can to the wheels, but make sure it doesn't clip anywhere. Even though it's probably not going to be very noticeable, but you just don't wanna make it look too stupid. So we're gonna wrap this all the way, all the way around all of the tracks around the back sprocket as well. We're just gonna extrude it a couple more times in the back here. And once we bring it back down here under the first wheel, we have to extrude it a few more times and we're just gonna fill it back in with this first vertex. And now we have a full loop, which we can use to rig our tracks or to parent the tracks to the curve here. Now we have our 3D origin here for the curve and we're gonna select these tracks. We're gonna snap them onto the 3D origin here. So 3D cursor to the origin of the curve. And then we select the tracks when it was shift S, we snap the selection of the cursor there. And now we can just add a curve modifier to this. The curve object is going to be the path and we just have to increase the number of tracks which are connected here. As you can see in the end, we're probably gonna have a slightly smaller gap or we're gonna have to slightly adjust the value. In this case, it seems to be pretty good, but you might have to adjust the value in the end so that they connect a little bit better. And now when we move these tracks along the X axis, it looks like they're rotating, which means we can now take these tracks and we can add a transformation constraint. Again, we're gonna target the hull. We're gonna check extrapolate and we're gonna set the owner to the local space. 
This time we're going to map from location and we're going to map onto the location as well. So every time the tank moves along the x-axis, we need these tracks to move along the x-axis as well. Now we have to keep in mind that it's very important that we parent this curve to the hull as well, okay? So now everything moves together with the hull. Now, every time the tank moves by minus one or one meter on the x-axis, all right, minus one to one right there, we want to set this the other way around. This is going to be one and minus one over here on the x-axis. So when we move the tank on the x-axis, now everything is moving in the opposite direction. I'm just going to show you one more time. You can copy these figures. Make sure you copy all these settings into the constraint here for the tracks. So now we have one side of the tracks rigged. All right, we're probably gonna have to place them a little bit closer like this. And now we have to go to the other side and do the same thing all the way on the other side. So we're gonna delete all these wheels and we're gonna place our 3D cursor in the middle. By the way, let's snap our 3D cursor to the middle uh, or the origin to the middle of the tank here. Then we're gonna select all of these wheels, except we're gonna deselect the hull and all these axles, axles and stuff here that we don't want to copy. We want to copy all this and with our 3D cursor in the middle of the tank, we're gonna set the 3D cursor as a pivot point. We're gonna duplicate everything and scale it to minus one on the Y axis. And then we're just gonna make sure that we invert our normals with shift N, all right? So now we have the same set of tracks on the other side of the tank as well, and it moves pretty well. The only problem is that they're still not rotating when the tank rotates, all right? So we're gonna go back to the first side over here. We're gonna close this first transformation constraint and we're gonna add another transformation constraint. This time, again, we're gonna target the hull, extrapolate owner to local space. This time we're going to map from rotation onto rotation. So this time, every time the tank rotates by 45 degrees, we need these, this wheel to rotate by a certain amount as well, all right, around the Z axis. This rotates around the Y axis. So we map from, let's say, minus 45 to 45 degrees on the Z axis, that, that's where the tank rotates, onto the Y source, uh, onto the Y axis, which is going to get its information from the, from the Z axis here. And we're going to set that to minus 180 and 180. So now when the tank rotates, this is moving uh, accordingly, except this one should be moving backwards. So we just have to inverse these figures. All right, so 180 and minus 180 over here. And now the, the wheels are moving perfectly. So now we're gonna select all these other wheels as well. All right, once again, we're gonna select all of them and we're gonna select this one last so that we can just copy the constraints. So we're gonna go over here to the object menu, constraints and copy constraints to selected objects. We're just gonna have to do the same thing one more time for the tracks, all right? So add a new transformation constraint, extrapolate, uh, target the hull, owner is a local space, map from uh, rotation, so minus 45 to 45 degrees is going to result in the location change on the x-axis, which gets its information from the z-axis over here. Minus one meter and one meter should be fine. Let's see if that works. I think we're gonna have to slightly increase the values there. So we're gonna go from minus two to two, and now it looks like the tracks are rotating perfectly. And now we just have to do the same thing on the other side one more time, all right? Transformation constraint, extrapolate, owner hull, uh, target hull, owner local space, map from rotation around the z-axis, minus 45 to 45 degrees, and map to location, or map to rotation around the y-axis, which gets its information from the z-axis, 180 degrees, minus 180 degrees. And now this little wheel should rotate, except again, we messed up the direction, so we're gonna do minus 180 to 180. And now every time we rotate the tank, the wheel is moving accordingly. And now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna copy all this information onto the other wheels, all right? Object, uh, constraints, and we're gonna copy all the constraints. And finally, we're gonna have to do the same thing for the track some more time. Transformation, extrapolate, target the hull, owner local space, map from rotation, minus 45 degrees. The 45 degrees map onto the location on the X axis, which gets its information from the Z axis minus one meter to one meter. Let's see if that works. It's moving in the opposite direction. So we're gonna go from two meters to minus two meters to also speed it up a little bit, all right? And now we have a fully rigged tank and you can do this pretty much on any tank that you download from anywhere.